What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Very special one today. My man Mr. Slam Jam V2 Katakura receiving his super evolution along with a level limit break. I've been waiting for this day for a while. We finally have him. Let's go ahead and start talking about it, right? Now remember, as I said, you know, this guy is level 150, as max as you possibly can get. He has limit break expansion, so he has the buffed captain ability as well. So, let's go ahead and talk about it. So, Captain ability-wise, he gives minus one cooldown at the start of the quest. That's always a, a really useful asset for this character. And then being a four times captain to fighter slasher, shooter driven, and powerhouse. Very similar to the super evolution of Carrot, where they decided to just, you know, boost all the classes by the multiplier, rather than have a separate multiplier for each individual class on one character. It's a much better change, makes team building easier. I know some people kind of like, you know, they, they get like super hard over, you know, how difficult characters are to team build with, and they feel like absolute genius Einsteins when they build a team that works for content. But, you know, for the for the average player, this is a much needed change. And then also providing a 1.25 health boost for the for those classes as well is always nice, making him make him just more bulky, of course. And then also providing a 1.3 times color affinity boost, meaning that if a character attacks with type advantage, there's gonna be a 5.2 times multiplier. And personally, I kind of wish that this multiplier was a little bit higher. I wish that the base multiplier for, for attack was higher and then the color affinity was lower and then maybe make it round out to like a 5.4, 5.3, something like that. Um, 5.2, it's still very good, but I think that, you know, considering we had Kuzan and, and, and Akainu, this probably should have been just a touch higher, but it's still very, very good. But then of course, making all these slots matching strength, sight, int, recovery, tandem is fantastic. Just so many matching slots naturally and then every time you move into a new stage you heal 50% of the damage that you took in the previous stage making him just extremely bulky of course if you get despaired and then you get you know dealt damage then that's obviously going to be quite bad because the damage that you're dealt while you're despaired does not actually count towards healing at the end of that stage but captain ability wise I'm quite content with this of course he's easier to build for more matching slots cooldown health everything is fantastic with this guy now unfortunately these characters don't receive super classes or super types which i think would be kind of interesting if they decided to explore something like that but unfortunately he doesn't have one of those but then we can have a look at his special ability so his special ability got a pretty big change because you know previous to this this character was focused on just damage it was just a damage dealing special based on how much damage you had received before launching the special and this is still the same except that the fact that the multipliers are a lot higher the amount of damage damage that you need to take to get the max capacity from the special is lowered which is nice at least but that's the thing normal attacks only had been introduced and it really made specials like this and v2 doflamingo for example just completely completely redundant so they needed to add something to these characters to make them more usable and they have done that so you know he still does the damage which is nice if there's no normal attacks only you're able to abuse that to your fullest extent but now he also will change block slots and type slots into matching which is a pretty nice change and then he also says after one turn has passed he gives fighter slasher shooter driven and powerhouse characters a 2.5 times attack boost for two turns so I like that. They've added just an attack boost on top of it. I was a little scared that considering his captain ability was focused around hitting with type advantage, getting color affinity, that they were going to implement that in his special ability as well. But I'm actually quite thankful that they didn't do that and they decided to go with an attack boost instead. Meaning that even if you don't have type advantage, you still have a significant attack boost, which is good. Now, obviously he still does the damage, we already know that, but they added an additional effect when you get him to level 150, where it says that if you have normal attacks only when you launch the special, it's going to make it easier to land perfect strikes for one turn. And also, it will allow you to get a 2.25 times attack boost to the classes that he boosts, being fighter, slasher, shooter, driven, and powerhouse, 2.25 for one turn. So it's just saying that, you know, when you launch the special and you're mainly aiming to get damage on activation, if you have normal attacks only, instead of getting the damage that you would normally get from his tap timing bonus damage and the special damage itself, you get an attack boost. So it's really cool in the fact that you can build teams with this guy in such a way where you can have an attack boost on activation and after one turn has passed, you get two turns of a stronger attack boost for the same classes that he boosts. I think it's phenomenal changes to his special ability and honestly makes him relatively useful as a crewmate too because not only does he provide, you know, attack boosts for five of the eight classes and it's a pretty significant attack boost at that as well. 
but he also provides that type change, which a lot of teams can definitely utilize. So I do like that, and it's kind of similar to what they did with Sakazuki V2 and Kuzan V2, where they gave these characters super evolutions, and normally using them as crewmates is relatively difficult because they had these special abilities that would shuffle slots around, and it, depending on having, you know, beneficial orb enablers with crewmate abilities, you know, getting matching slots can be kind of difficult with specials like that. But giving them specials just outright just change them into matching, that just go away with the orb shuffling and get straight, just get the straight matching slots is a huge upgrade to these characters. And Katakuri, who didn't even have it previously, can not only, not only just change type slots into matching, but also block slots as well, which are relatively common in content. So I do like that. And it does go down to a 12 turn cooldown, which is actually pretty significant with the limit break expansion. And if you have the, you know, the 12 turn cooldown and you're using him as captain, you get minus one cooldown there. You can have minus cooldown with sockets. You can have minus cooldown with a ship. He starts off at a relatively low cooldown. So I think it's a huge asset that a lot of people may try and utilize with this guy. As I touched on a little bit earlier, probably the most significant change in this character overall, if you had to say what is the best change of this character, it is definitely the special ability itself, being able to provide attack boost now. But even with that aside, I think that the change to the way that he boosts classes is probably the most significant change to the character. As before, you know, he, he only will boost, you know, slashes, fighters, shooters, uh, driven and powerhouse characters. You know, those characters, it's hard to actually find uh, characters that have both of those five classes on that one unit. But now, you can kind of explore and use different characters. You know, like Kuzan V2, for example, that we're using on this team, he's a shooter and a striker. Now, Katakuri, normally, he wouldn't actually boost Kuzan fully. He only boosts shooters. He actually doesn't boost strikers, which is kind of a downside. And the same thing with Roger and Newgate. You know, Roger and Newgate are a slasher and a striker. He doesn't boost strikers, but he does boost slashes. So, you know, Katakuri gets a vast amount of characters now that he can get access to, which I think is a huge, huge upgrade for this character overall, and is probably the most exciting thing about it, because it means you have a lot, of, a lot more characters to utilize when you're team building for certain pieces of content. So overall, I think it's going to be kind of interesting to see how people are able to utilize this guy moving forward. I know that if there's any chance I, I have the opportunity to use this guy, I want to go ahead and use him because he just is so fascinating to me. And I love the fact that you can have multiple turns of an attack boost. I think that's going to be very valuable in lots of scenarios. And I think that, you know, while he is a fighter character, and fighter are probably one of the worst classes in the game. And people think that's kind of weird to say that fighter are, are a bad class. But if you really try and build a mono fighter team with utility and damage it's not super easy to do obviously he's powerhouse and there's fantastic powerhouse characters you can utilize but uh, I think that's mainly where he's going to see the most usage in the fact that he is a powerhouse unit synergizes well with you know a lot of the Kaido crew that have been coming out recently so focused on the powerhouse class in general that's probably where he's going to see the most usage um, but even just in his own teams because of the vast amount of characters you can use with him now I think that's going to really open the door to some interesting Katakuri teams a little you know later on down the line but with all that being said that is going to wrap up my video here today showcasing Katakuri in just a very few select pieces of content but I really hope you guys have enjoyed this one today and definitely let me know down below in the comment section what are your thoughts and opinions on the super evolution of Katakuri and what are you most excited for next like what kind of super evolution do you guys want to see next and I know a lot of people really want to see V2 Shanks he's a fan favorite and I think it would be kind of awesome to have you know a film red celebration with the super evolution of V2 Shanks along the way that is definitely quite possible but we'll have to wait and see how things go but i hope you guys have enjoyed the video today and if you guys did enjoy it make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that i post on my channel including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video